right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Here's another installment. We're just going to go through today some pretty common lab equipment that you might see. This is for my pre-AP kiddos. Um, you may or may not have been introduced to this uh, set of equipment before, or you may have seen it before but not necessarily been told exactly what it's for. And it's really important as we go through like perfecting and, and getting better at our lab technique, knowing what the purpose and function of common lab equipment is that we'll run across. All right, so here we go. First one I'm going to get started with is actually a beaker. And so a beaker, most people have seen, it's a cylindrical um, – uh, apparatus that you actually are just going to mix chemicals in. Sometimes they do have graduated marks in there, but for beakers, I think for a beaker, man, I want you to write this real big. Never use a beaker to measure a volume. Never use a beaker to measure volume. Even though it's got graduated marks on there, ladies and gentlemen, those are approximate and they are just to give you a guideline of, hey, did I really mess up really, really bad if I mix two things together, all right? Beakers, we hold chemicals in them. We mix chemicals in them, all right? Simple enough. The other thing that we do not measure anything in is called an Erlenmeyer flask, and that's about the shape of it, all right? Erlenmeyer flask. And also an Erlenmeyer flask will have graduated marks on it, but we do not use it. To measure volumes, all right? Beakers and Erlenmeyers are only for mixing chemicals, holding chemicals in. The reason that they are shaped differently, um, a beaker is normally something you're going to be able to stir. An Erlenmeyer works best if you are actually going to have to swirl the, the material or if you need to store it and put a stopper in it because stoppers rubber stoppers that actually seal it um, like a cork can actually fit in there for beakers the, the mouth of those is too wide to actually use stoppers so Erlenmeyer's beakers we're going to use them to hold materials to uh, mix materials perform reactions in definitely one thing that, that's common about them never use them to measure a volume okay what do we use to measure volumes graduated cylinders these guys are really long really tall normally they got some kind of base to them all right, so that they stand upright, and they have lots of increments in them. All right, so a graduated cylinder is what we are going to use to measure volume. All right, so graduated cylinders, we use them to measure volumes. We don't do reactions in them, never mix chemicals in them. You want to keep whatever you're measuring out to be pure. Um, so we use them to measure volumes, and then you actually can deliver it to whatever container you're going to, to be using. Normally, you'll, you'll measure in a graduated cylinder, pour into a beaker, or pour into an Erlenmeyer. All right. Next thing is I'll go ahead and do my best to draw a pair of tongs. There we go. Tongs. And then they've got something out there like that. Yep. Don't be mad at my, ma my art skills, folks. So our tongs just like they look we're just going to use them to pick things up and put them down now there's a couple of different variations on the tong if there's rubber um, on the tips of them it's normally some kind of thermal insulation that means we'll use it to pick up hot materials um, if they're not then then we generally are going to use them to pick up um, just about anything else all right we've got test tube tongs we've got crucible tongs we've got beaker tongs we got all different kinds of tongs the general purpose of tongs is to actually pick something up and just move it around all right okay let me clear out these i've just got a couple of more that i want to do with you uh let's see volumetric flask the volumetric flask has a very narrow neck and then kind of a bulb at the bottom and there's only one line up here and they're normally labeled so like if i label that as a 100 milliliter volumetric flask that means at that line right there, that line is accurately, precisely 100 milliliters, all right? With the volumetric flask, we can only measure one volume with it, and that's it. This is what we're generally going to use to make our standardized solutions and to make our dilutions in. These are very precise ways to measure volume. So the most precise, as a matter of fact, is the way we're going to be able to measure volumes is with a volumetric flask, generally used for standardized solutions and to make dilutions. 
The other one that we're going to look at is a spatula, and it kind of looks like a, a funny looking spoon. Um, this is kind of curved in here, and it's just what you would think it is. We just scoop the chemicals out, and we actually can weigh them out using a spatula, or we can mix them into materials, um, whatever it is. But spatulas we're going to use to um, get chemicals out of the bottles, get chemicals out of the containers. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Some of them actually look like spoons. Some of them look like shovels, um, whatever they look like, but they're used to, to measure out and transfer solid materials. All right, moving on. Next thing, a weigh boat. It's a square, I guess this is a terrible, uh, yeah, there's my art skills on display right there. Uh, let's see, here we go, and just, we're going to do it like that. And so the weigh boat is actually a three-dimensional, it's like a box, it's like a plastic box, and a lot of the times, um, actually all the times, weigh, wait, there we go, weigh, boat, we are going to use a weigh boat to weigh out solids, all right, because we never, we never, we never, we never, put chemicals directly on a balance or a scale to measure out the weight or the mass. All right? Don't do it. We're going to put it in a weigh boat. All right? Helps keep the, the balance clean. Helps from contaminating the chemicals that we're using. Um, and sometimes, believe it or not, you put something on those, on those scales and a reaction can happen right there in front of your eyes because the chemical that we're weighing out will actually react with the metal on the balance. All right, so use weigh boats whenever you're gonna, whenever you're gonna weigh anything out. All right. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I guess one other thing I could talk to you about is a ring stand. A ring stand has a very big base um, and a solid bar that goes up. Now, what we use this for is to connect things to and to build apparatus. The most common thing that you're going to use on there is called a burette. A burette is a graduated instrument that we can use to deliver so this is a burette this down here is a ring stand all right and normally what we have is we have clamps that will clamp onto the to the pole on the ring stand and hold the the materials that the the, the pieces that we wanted to hold all right so a burette i guess the function of a burette that you'll want to know you've probably seen one before is just to deliver um, precise amounts of liquid so the burette here is to deliver precise amounts of liquid. The ring stand is actually just support whatever um, pieces of material that we needed to hold. Okay. All right. Real quick introduction. Um, hopefully you don't have any questions, but if you do, write them down. Come to class. Get ready to discuss it. You're going to have to do a lab tomorrow where you're going to have to pick out some equipment. Um, I'm going to give you a task to do, and you're going to have to go figure out which piece of equipment you're going to use. Um, so I will see you in class.